What's up, Pride Fam? What's going on, guys? You may notice a change of location. I'm here at BBA Gym in Sunnyvale, California. Um, we had some differences with my old gym. I'll save that story for another time, but we are training at a new facility. Uh, my buddy Travis was the owner of this gym. He was kind enough to let us come in here on Saturdays and keep the Prime Fam going. Prime Saturdays going hard and strong. Uh, this gym's honestly really badass. It's a private PT gym. It's like 5,000 square feet of really nice open space, and it's it's really nice in here, and we're alone, which is awesome. So, Travis, thank you for having us. If you are looking for a personal trainer, and he didn't ask me to say this, I'm saying this for him because him and his guys are really good. Check him out in Sunnyvale, California. It's right near San Jose. If you're in need of someone to, to actually train you seriously, not only are the prices good here, but it's much better training quality than going to a commercial gym. They're literally the only personal trainers I recommend in this area that have like a nice private facility. So check them out. Guys, we're gonna talk about a lot today. I wanna talk about fixing my rib position. You may have seen my old video on YouTube where I talked about rib position and me flaring my ribs in the squat. I have since changed my stance on this because I am now able to squat ribs down and my strength is not completely zapped when I do it. It is still hard for me, but I realized the missing piece for me was dorsiflexion. I'll explain that a little bit later, but essentially because I was squatting in my flats, even though I had enough dorsiflexion mobility to reach the whole of the squat, it was just like barely enough and that was limiting my position and causing me to have to overextend to get into the whole of the squat. Ever since going back to my squat heels, show the heels. Ever since going back to them, uh, I can now actually squat with my ribs down and kind of sit more down like I used to. And I went away from the heel for a while. I've changed my stance on both of these and I wanna be open with you guys. I don't always get everything right. Now, while there are still some people who do actually squat better, a little bit more extended in the ribs, the reason why I'm changing, even though I'm not as strong, is now I'm actually able to do it with decently heavy weights. And simultaneously, it's actually so much healthier for me. My back, my knees, everything just feel way healthier now that I'm getting my ribs down. I wanna show you guys what I did to fix it though, because I had a lot of fixes that helped, but it wasn't until I got the dorsiflexion stuff right and a few other warm-ups right that really made this actually doable on my squat sets. And guys, literally I've gone back to squatting three times a week, which I haven't been doing for months, and I feel healthier than ever. It's been weeks of doing that, like everything's better. So come along with me, I'm gonna show you this drill. We're gonna talk about this drill here. This drill is basically gonna get your abs and ribs down, so your abs super on. It's gonna get a slight posterior, posterior tilt to your pelvis, and it's gonna get internal rotation and extreme knee dominance in your squat pattern to help basically train the opposite of how we're supposed to squat on the bar. So if you don't know this, obviously when we squat, especially in a low bar, we want a lot of external rotation and we want a lot of extension. We try to stay tight in our back. Over time, I abused this and led to a very overextended squat position. And one of the ways I'm kind of counteracting that with my warm ups to get my abs on and to get my internal rotators, my adductors to fire a little bit more and contribute to the squat so I don't stay as overextended is by doing this warm up. What you're gonna do is grab a nice heavy kettlebell. This is about 53 pounds. I'm gonna elevate my heels even more than just my squat heel does. And I'm gonna stand in a very narrow stance. So feet almost together. From here, I'm gonna get into a goblet position and I'm gonna get my ribs down and my low back tucked. Babe, show them from the side. So I'm not squatting like how you normally do, neutral. We're literally going to go to the opposite extreme and you're not gonna get hurt from doing this. So you're gonna go ribs down, posture your tilt, big breath in. You're gonna send the knees forward and squat down like this and then come back up into it. What we're cueing here is knee dominance, internal rotation, flexion in that upper back, and we're getting those abs on. This is something I got from my buddy Compound Performance on Instagram. It's a really good drill and I do a bunch of reps like that, warming up. We're essentially training the opposite extreme of what we do on that bar and it really helps me get in tune with actually keeping those abs down and it actually strengthens that. The other thing I do is I grab this guy. I'm out of breath already because I'm a fat power lifter. I get this up on my knee. You can do this with a band looped around your ankle too. And I basically work on that same ab position and that same back position. And I just lean in and try to really mobilize my dorsiflexion. The reason why this is needed is because when we squat, <clears throat> say I'm in my squat stance. If I send the knees forward while I kind of sit my hips down and back and open up into the squat, if I run out of dorsiflexion here as I'm descending down, where, where does the slack have to come from? My hips, right? 
So my hips start going back more and more and more to compensate for my lack of stability and mobility in my ankle, and that causes me to overextend. This was a missing piece for me. I didn't think about my dorsi flexion. So when I was working with Matt Cronin, I couldn't figure this out. I was like, why does it feel like I have to extend my back when I squat? I thought I was just a special snowflake. I wasn't. I was missing a piece of the wing. So now I'm able to squat down and keep these ribs down because my knees can travel a little bit more forward and out and I can sit my ass down and I don't end up like this in this more kind of back flex or excuse me, back extended position. So dorsi flexion, I went back to my squat heel and I'm also just mobilizing the hell out of this, jamming the knee forward, keeping the ribs down, posterior tilt, and bringing that knee in and just really stretching out all this posterior side of the ankle and that calf and I'm just leaning in and that's what I do to prepare to squat. The other thing I do is I also work some internal rotation which I have some videos of Chris in doing this which I'll splash on the screen but essentially I'm just jamming a foam roller into the wall while dragging my heel back to get my adductor and my low hamstrings on and that allows me to not have to like rely on jamming my knees way out to get down into the hole of the squat. I can work more internally rotated and send the knees a little bit more forward and that stops me from wanting to extend because extension goes hand in hand with external rotation. All right, I'm already out of breath because I'm talking while I'm warming up. I'm going to get to training. I'm going to show everyone training. BBA gym, it's nice. I like this spot. Come on. There you go. That's fine, it's not. <laughs> that was way better than the first set. Way better. Okay, what were you working on with that set, Adrian? So I was pretty much working on keeping my torso tight so that instead of kind of just pushing through my legs and kind of compensating by moving my torso up, I'm just pushing through my feet coming straight up and keeping tightness pretty much. We were practicing tensioning, tensioning herself into the hole. Yeah. The first that she did, she kind of just like flung herself down. Super unstable, so this time she like pulled herself into it. You, you really do look like a fucking gorilla from the back. That's a compliment. And if I was into bestiality, that would be uh, me hitting on you. That's hot. Yes! <laughs> High five! No, that's weird. Don't high five that. <laughs> Bestiality, that's what we, okay. This is getting cut out. No, I'm keeping this in it. Come on, Andrew. Big breath, tension. Oh yeah. Uh, especially into the hole, just because I tend to rush it. If you look back at my old training footage, which well, I archive, but I guess I'll bring it back up later. Um, I just kind of like bomb my way into it. And the second I do that, I just kind of like lose that tension, all that's built in. When I do catch a good rebound, but like I'm out of position. It's not a good way, or it's not even a good habit to be lifting a good, not necessarily range of motion, but a good uh, movement pattern to keep abusing. So rather, instead of just bombing my way down, just Focusing on the brace, incorporating the glutes, tensioning my way down, sitting in that hole, maintaining that position, and coming right back up. Oh, what a what a coincidence! You and Adrian, pause squats, fix yeah, well, certain like, things with it's tension. Like, uh, the, it's like we're getting programmed cookie cutter. Pro Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about. I'm going to put it into a little bit better terms for them. Is essentially a disconnect in the torso. So oftentimes people tend to dive on like Adrian and him, and especially very quad dominant athletes. They tend to get disconnected in their torso. You see two things, either compensation through folding or compensation through extreme overextension. The problem with this is this huge disconnect. Even when I squatted overextended, I actually maintained that torso position the whole time. So if I started kind of extended, I came up kind of extended, and that's actually better than seeing someone start perfect, but they then divert into this pattern or into this pattern here, because that disconnect in the torso creates a disconnect in force transfer. Your torso is what sends the tension press to the ground with your legs, 
back up into the bar. And if we see that torso lose positioning, we lose force transfer, and then you miss groove, and then everything hurts and is bad, and you're not strong. So with them, we're trying to keep that connection in that line. Essentially, we're trying to make their body one whole piece. We're trying to create a kinetic chain that is tight and strong, instead of seeing the limbs looking tight, and then the torso just blah, like that. That was my very, that, that last part was scientific. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Beautiful. Okay, what are you working on that's different with your paw squats than compared to Adrian? Because this is a good example to give them a chance to, at home, the audience, to understand there's different reasonings why we implement the same variation. So what do you focus on with your paw squats? I'm mostly focused on staying my quads out of the hole. So I tend to shift back into my hips as I come up. So I'm trying to focus on like staying perfectly even. In my why hips. is that important that you stay in the quads instead of just allowing that shift? Especially since it's gonna happen naturally at higher loads. Why are you trying to prevent that? I'm trying to prevent it like at lighter loads so that when it does get heavy, it doesn't happen as bad. Yes, because with you, a problem in the past is basically you've been, you've gotten to max out your fucking buildups to that go really good. And then what happens when we add like five pounds? Yeah, I just tip. It goes from like RP7 to like RP9 when the load sh isn't dictating that. It's like a misgroove, yeah? Good shit. All right, for this set, guys, I'm really focusing on unracking with my ribs down. And when I brace, my problem is I always want to go like this, so I'm focusing on keeping them down. And you'll notice as I do these reps, I try to just come straight back up. Don't let my hips shoot, kind of what they were talking about. But for me, it's to keep those ribs connected and down. And I really try to stay in my quads. And a trick I do to do this is by keeping my shoulders and elbows packed down, elbows under the bar. Push up into this, get into my squat stance now. Shoulders back and down, but ribs down. Watch the ribs. Let's go, tension. Oh yeah! The baby fucking gorilla twisting houses. That was solid. Look at that gorilla fucking head with that gorilla fucking back. See my calves under this fucking lighting? It's just like the Wait, wait, lift, lift the quads. Show them the quads and the calves. Yeah, there we go. Stand right there. Look how massive. This guy was built to lift houses. Let's go, come on. Control the bar. Well, fucking moved. Yeah. The bar's rolling. It's those normie plates, bro. The normie equipment. That was good. Hey, um, why why did you do so many build ups? Like what what how many what sets did you hit before this? Like what weights? Uh, I went up about five to ten pounds almost every single set. Okay, why why do that? Isn't that gonna tire you out, bro? Isn't that gonna like There's nerf? no such thing as warming up too much. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. How much weight have you lost now uh, since starting this cut? I've, I've lost about 20 pounds. Uh, how how in, over the span of how long did we do that? About four months. Four uh, months. Yeah. And we how did we do it? You know, explain to them how we took that. We did the first part and took a break. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what we did was we basically just tried to get me down as quickly as possible. Uh, we cut about 10 pounds uh, pretty quickly. Then took a, a break for a while and then uh, started to cut my cut me again really fast just to get me to a good weight. Yeah, right now. and now have you experienced any strength loss losing this 20 pounds? Um, strength loss? I've actually gained strength. Yeah. Uh, there's real no, no strength loss at all. Fuck uh, yeah. And the way we did that, a lot of people might freak out, especially in a four month period, losing 20 pounds. But if you periodize it right, and you do it correctly, you get stronger. Or worst case, maintain. But strength yeah. loss, that ain't gonna happen. Pound it, good shit. Pound fam. Yeah, fuck yeah! Ah. 
All right, guys. Uh, so I have my top set. I have ascending sets, so build up sets of two, all the way to a RP seven. I overshot it a little bit. It's probably about a seven and a half or so. Uh, that was just honestly my ego and rushing on this new equipment. I'm coaching, so I kind of like chose a bad weight. That's my own bad. But I have a fatigue drop now. So my back off work. My first sets are uh, two by two at minus eight percent. However, I took off a little bit extra just because to account for like that slight overshoot. Uh, so I took off like more like 9%, 9.5. Uh, and then after that, I have a two by four at 72%. So um, I use fatigue drops and percentages, especially when I'm getting close to testing. Uh, I did have I me, mean, that's, this is a whole story from another time because we had some issues with our current gym. That's why we're in here. They did some really shady stuff to us that we weren't happy with. And so I'm at this gym now. Um, so I was supposed to be testing my maxes. I'm probably going to just find another local meet to do because it's going to be hosted out of that gym. So I won't be doing the meet there. So I'm testing sometime soon. I just have to find the appropriate meet. But when you get close to doing your testing in, on, at a meet, when you get close to competing, I tend to increase volume a little bit. And so I start adding in more back offs. And um, so before I was just doing set percentages, now I've added some fatigue drop back offs too. So I'm accumulating a lot of squat work right now, but that's just to really boost it up because my squat's been sticky. The first set, my rib position was a little off, so, or, or the top set, and I want to try to really improve it on these back downs. Out, especially on that second rep, the bar rolled on the first one. I'm still not quite able to really do my top sets, my strongest sets, at uh, with my like perfect rib down position. But even at like 495, it's feeling pretty good. So I'm getting there slowly but surely. It's been a battle, but man, my squat feels so much more stable like that. All right, guys, one cue you have to understand with ribs down is it's about abs and crunching them on and exhaling. You have to exhale in order to get the ribs down and I have to push up through keeping those ribs contracted. So what I mean by that is most people when they think ribs down, they kind of hunch their back and then just extend right out of it or flex even more. What you want to do is when you're setting up on the bar, you're going to want to breathe out and crunch the abs on. So here, stomach looks fat and bloated. Watch when I kick my, my ribs on by blowing out and exhaling. I'm going to go. You see how I tighten those abs up? Everything gets tight and drawn in and then I brace into that and I get a fat, like ab looking gut. That's what we want, we want pressurization there. Doesn't fucking look pretty, but that's okay. So when you exhale, you gotta contract the abs on. Now you're in that rib position, and then you brace air pressure out against that. And you hold that, and when you squat, you push up through it. Don't let it extend, keep those abs on the whole time. I usually start overextended, and I try to arch into it to set my shoulders into my back pocket. Once I have it pushed into my back and I'm set, I bring the ribs down. I'm gonna blow out. And I try to keep the shoulders set. Sometimes I have to do that twice. Reset. All right, ribs are on. Big breath in. You burn a lot of calories too because it's fucking hard doing it the right way. Okay, what happened that first set? <laughs> so, first attempt, I was focusing on like every variable and not focusing on the one thing that actually matters on my deadlift, which is my grip. Yes. I rely super heavily on my double overhand to kind of like make my deadlift easier for me. So I don't have to focus on hook or mix and learn all this other technique. But I just didn't think about my grip at all going into that one. Got my brace good set up, back was tight, everything came down and just kind of like went grip to the bar. 
And then when I went to pull, I had no friction on the bar. It just rolled right out of my hands. And what happened when the grip gave? What else gave? As soon as the grip gave, my low back shot down, upper back shot down, glutes shut off. Yeah, it just works like a chain. Like literally everything shut off all at once. And so a lot of people, they may not be cognizantly aware when the grip's giving out, especially if it's only partially giving out, but they're still able to get it out, get it up. And they'll think, oh, my back's giving. That's like what's going on. But in reality, it could also be the grip. This is what we were talking about in that other video. So I'm working on extension and opening up my hips. So externally rotating my hips at the pause. So right off of the floor, I'm trying to stay a little bit more extended so that I can stay upright and place less demand on my back. Why is that important uh, instead of just kind of heaving the weight? And why are you doing these beltless and with the pause? I'm doing these beltless and with the pause. So beltless to kind of reduce subjective load right now. Um, we're still like 10 weeks out, so I'm, I'm doing doubles, so it's still relatively heavy, but without the belt, it makes it a little bit less weight. Um, and then with the pause, we work on technique, so a lot of times when it gets heavy, I tend to like close my hips, and it causes me to round forward a little bit like that, so if I can open up off the floor, I can stay more extended and more upright to really get that lockout. Bars. If you have good technique, this makes it way harder. I think a lot of people think like a whippy bar with like non-comp equipment is like instantly easier. It's so much harder. I have to go slower. I have to brace harder. When you have good technique, you rely on, on the force transfer being really smooth with competition plates that keep it stacked in. Because these things are so packed out and they're different diameters, this thing, all the plates break one at a time, so I get this jitter effect. So I have to go slow. The whip is like way more than the other. It might help a sumo puller out or some other guys like that, but especially conventional pullers with good technique. Or maybe should... you should just have shitty technique. Yeah, maybe. Just get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so luckily, uh, Travis is really cool, the owner of the gym. He's probably gonna let us bring our own equipment in. This gym's like a, a personal training gym. It's actually private. He's just like really cool and letting us use it. So he doesn't have like powerlifting equipment. This stuff works for you know traditional like training and stuff, but. We need some powerlifting equipment in here, so I think we're gonna be able to arrange that because he's pretty uh, good with working with us. So, you should have something soon. So on this one, you're gonna notice I'm gonna control my rib position too. This is just as important for the deadlift, especially when you pull in the belt. I actually purposely try to get my shoulders long and kind of in front, not rounded like this, not like KK, but just long. I never pin my shoulders back because boom, ribs pop out, but then also it shortens your arms. It makes them short. I like them nice and long. So, I'm gonna get on here. Position the feet, twist the feet into the ground. I do do this in the beginning, but that's just to set my rear delts externally, kind of externally rotate, and I get extended and tight, but then I bring the ribs down, tight it into it, big breath in. pass out when I do it right. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk through this because we're running out of time. It's late in here. So more tips for keeping the ribs down. It's not just about cueing it on there. We gotta strengthen this position, especially if you've been cheating it and kind of abusing an overextended position for many years. You're gonna find you need accessory work. I promise I'm not gonna have a heart attack while saying this. So <clears throat> what I recommend, kettlebell goblet squats, with a rib down focused position. I've talked about the kettlebell goblet squat in the past. It's one of the best core exercises you could ever do, both for carryover to the squat and for teaching this great ab activation, great rib position. So kettlebell goblet squats, you'll see me, Yessie, Chris, and all doing those. I'll splash those over the screen. The other thing I really like, weighted planks with protraction of the scapula. And again, focus on those ribs being down and kind of hugging down. A lot of people teach the plank, by posteriorly tilting the hip, that's good too, but they forget about the ribs. You gotta protract, get that serratus on, get those ribs down. The third strengthening exercise I like is Bulgarian split squats with, uh, you can add load, but in the beginning, even just really light, like 10 pound dumbbells or whatever, even body weight. And just going through with a very rib down, rounded back position and focusing on internal rotation because that goes hand in hand with the ribs. And then also getting the ribs down. Those are the three exercises I like. 
Guys, that's it for today. I'm done filming because I'm tired. I still got to finish my bench back house. My arms hurt. Andrew's arms hurt from holding the camera. Ah. His fake strength is he's on steroids. Yes. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. Comment, like, do all that stuff. Until next time, see y'all later.